Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for June 13th, 2019. Hey, before we jump into this this morning, I wanna let everyone know that tomorrow there will be no morning uh, video or morning blog post. I have to be traveling for a wedding tomorrow and will be gone so there will be no video tomorrow i do apologize for that but i will be back on monday and we'll get right back in the saddle here so i apologize you're gonna have to have one day one day without listening to me uh, wag my jaw about <laughs> the overall market uh, thank you everyone and your loyalty to this channel you guys are the best i truly truly appreciate it thank you so much um, let's take a look at what's going on here this morning. Well, well uh, futures last night were actually showing some modest selling going on again last night as um, Asian markets were dipping uh, lower last night, mostly because of concerns in uh, the protests in Hong Kong, uh, trouble over there. But um, then we had this news about a tanker fire over in the Gulf of Oman. And it has raised fears of a potential, uh, we don't know, uh, the news reports right now say that we don't know what the cause of the fire is. However, it's raised fears uh, that this was an attack and that's kind of piggybacking on um, an apparent sabotage of a tanker um, over there just weeks ago. So. Uh, this morning we're getting a substantial market reaction to this as oil prices surge higher. So this morning we're seeing um, the markets gap up on this news with um, oil prices surging. And you can see right now we're looking at the Dow getting a full complete reversal of yesterday's down move. Now, why that might be critical, um, if, if you happen to be short positions, anyone short may be pushed into um, a situation of, of another short squeeze, kind of like we had here, where um, all short traders that got short because of the the patterns and trends and things like that here in the chart just the just the overwhelming rally expecting more of a pullback uh, those traders could be squeezed out today and um, we could actually force this uh, market higher just based on a, a triggering a short squeeze so kind of keep that in mind um, that possibility does exist now we could also gap up and just find sellers and sell back off and create another pop and drop up here um, in, you know, three pop and drops here recently um, in the chart. So that is certainly possible as well, but just keep in mind that kind of that, um, that threat of a potential short squeeze giving us the ability to lift this market even higher. So let's take a look here. What do we, what do we have to think about um, in the price action of the chart? Let's look right in here. We have this level of resistance here in the Dow. And we have uh, this Dow downtrend in play. And you can see we're gapping up here this morning somewhere into this area of the market. So we're still beneath these resistance levels in the chart. And we're going to want to pay attention uh, to those pretty closely. If we do start to press higher, um, if we run into this level of resistance and are able to break through there, I would say an attack of all time highs could then be in the cards for the market. Uh, surprisingly, I don't know how much what has really changed that much in uh, the trade situation that creates that. Obviously, we have um, the hope of lowered interest rates um, helping to drive this, but um, kind of an interesting situation. So we have a very emotional market, and um, that market is really wanting the mar to push this back up. So if that occurs, watch this level of resistance right in here on the chart. Now, if we happen to start to slip and fail, remember that 50-day moving average is right below us here on the diamonds. 
We held that yesterday, but if we were to gap up into this area and find uh, only sellers up here and push down below that 50, that could be a bad thing for the market. So kind of keep those levels in mind. Watch that closely as we approach um, approach the day. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, very, very similar situation. It ended up holding nicely above its 50-day moving average, but obviously closed below yesterday's low, giving us that follow-through to the downside. Now you can see this morning we're looking at a gap up open that's uh, uh, threatening to completely reverse yesterday's move in the market. And if we do trigger that short squeeze in the chart, we want to look at these resistance levels up in here. That's kind of a zone right in here of resistance um, in the chart to see if we can push on through there. Because if we do, if we can push on through there, watch for a, a push it would be almost um impossible to me i think that if we push up there that they won't find some way to um to get up here and um set a new record high uh, or at least test that level up there so uh, we traveled a long ways it'd be kind of a shame not to finish the move right so <laughs> we'll have to watch this pretty closely now if this pop doesn't find any buyers and the sellers come on, we want to watch that 50 day moving average as the potential support here in the SPY uh, for that to hold. If that were to slip and fall on through there, then we really could be in trouble here in the market for an additional sell off. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at the queues. Queues are probably one of the bigger concerns that I have. And obviously, the queues, uh, why they're even getting a gap this morning is a little surprising. Um, there's there's no no oil companies in the tech sector, but um, the Nasdaq is getting a gap up open this morning, and you can see we're gapping above yesterday's move. So um, right here is where it's suggested to open right now. Um, so we're gapping above yesterday's move um, in the chart, and if we pull over here and look at that moving 50-day uh, moving average, that's going to put us up here challenging that 50-day moving average again as resistance, popping up there and challenging it as resistance. If we get a hold here, if uh, the bulls aren't show some strength, we get a little bit of a short squeeze and we close back above that 50-day moving average, that would be promising for the, the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ still has a lot of work to do before it could be thinking about attacking all-time highs. But in the same respect, holding above its 50-day moving average would be a good sign. Now, if we do see those uh, more of a pop and drop, we gap up, we hit that resistance and sellers come in, then I think we, we set up the possibility of a real critical problem here in the NASDAQ failing that 50-day moving average. And we'll have to watch that pretty closely because that could really bring in some additional selling into that tech sector. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM is getting a, a substantial pop this morning, um, seeing a nice gap up this morning here in the chart, completely reversing yesterday, but still below this bearish engulfing candle here and, and below these lows. I don't know that there'd be a reason to really panic here that we're just going to rip to the upside unless we start seeing that short squeeze coming into play and those buyers really begin to or those short traders really get squeezed out and we really start seeing uh, that start to move up pretty sharply on that move. So watch that closely. If we do catch that rally um, in this chart, first place I would watch for some price resistance is obviously right here. Uh, those candle tops, that would be um, uh, initial price resistance in the chart. And if we move on higher, I would look for these levels right through here to provide significant resistance on IWM. So watch that close. And let's keep in mind IWM is still well below its 50 day moving average, below its 200 day moving average. So there's nothing in this chart but resistance above uh, to challenge um, IWM. So a lot of work has to be done here if IWM is going to be poking its head above downtrends. 
Um, so let's watch that uh, carefully. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now the VIX um, I've been mentioning has just been really perplexing here lately. We rally, the market, uh, the VIX doesn't care. We, we sell off, the VIX doesn't care. Um, it is one of the oddest things I've seen in a long time in the VIX where we're just going nowhere here in the VIX. It's like everyone's just given up on all of this volatility and they just don't care what happens. We, you know, it just, we're, we're weary of it. We're tired. Um, you, nobody cares. And right now that seems to be the case, um, in the VIX. Now let's take a look here. We have this downtrend in play. And what could be occurring is we could just be kind of winding up toward the point of this little wedge in the chart. And we are certainly holding on to this uh, important level of support that really runs um, a long ways um, to uh, the left side of that chart. So just holding on in that area, we're going to have to keep an eye on this. If that fear starts to spike, that can bring in the sellers. Or if that fear finally starts to drop out of the market and the buyers start pushing things back up. So pretty interesting pattern here. And I'm not really sure what that means. I just think that when it does finally break, it could move in a big way. So watch it either both both directions. Watch it carefully. Let's take a look at T2122. It's the four week new high new low ratio. And yesterday's pullback did a really good job of moving us back down um, off of this um, overbought condition up here. So T2122 isn't giving us a direction at all, but what it is telling us is that we've opened a door um, to be able to rally significantly um, actually in the market, and we have still a rather large open hole to the bottom side that we could also fill. So, and, and, and we can see that, how we have spiked up and then spiked move down and spike up and move down, spike up and move down. And we're really not getting good directional decisions um, until we reach down into here for that um, um, oversold bounce to the upside. And we're a long ways from there. But we certainly have been using this level right in here to show us those pullbacks in the market. So if we do rally, watch this level up here for, again, that potential reversal to the downside. Let's take a quick look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has a couple things that may have something to say about the market this morning. First, we have the jobless claims. Jobless claims have continued to hold up really, really well. I don't know that that's going to change today, but that's certainly possible with the turmoil that we're seeing in the market. Um, that could certainly begin to change um, on those jobless claims. So kind of keep an eye on that at 8.30 a.m. this morning. Import and export prices right after that. They can sometimes move the market around a little bit, but I wouldn't expect a whole lot of price action um, around that. And then the natural gas report, which um, I would agree not expect to move the market and then later on today the fed balance sheet everything else is pretty much bond auctions and announcements um, overall we do have a pretty big day tomorrow since i'm not going to be here tomorrow make sure you pay attention to this pretty big day tomorrow with those retail sales and industrial production numbers those certainly can move the market substantially tomorrow you'll want to pay attention to those and perhaps the market could just be a little bit light and choppy as we wait for those big numbers on Friday. That is entirely possible. So kind of keep in mind that those big numbers could be weighing on the market uh, for tomorrow morning. We do have the business inventories and consumer sentiment. So it's actually a pretty big day on that economic calendar tomorrow morning that you'll want to pay attention to as you prepare for tomorrow. Let's take a look on the earnings calendar. We had um, 28 companies reporting earnings today, and they're coming in really, really fast this morning. The majority of them are the very, very small cap, um, non-consequential companies reporting today, and that's the majority of what's reporting today. Nothing that is really particularly notable today in those earnings reports. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. We're probably not going to see much going on there. And 
then tomorrow um, for your preparation there's 17 companies reporting and once again not likely um, not likely to see any major um, uh, moves tomorrow based on earnings reports however on Friday well actually uh, now that I'm looking on Friday I don't see anything on Friday that would be particularly notable so um, just a a um, earnings calendar that's likely not going to move us around at all um, today or tomorrow it's going to be more news based more emotion based uh, price action trading and then possibly those big earnings or big um, economic reports on Friday that could temper the market a little bit as we wait for those um, those numbers to come out so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day and i want to wish you great profits and if this is the first time you've seen these videos would you please do me a favor and click that subscribe button on youtube um, that big red subscribe button and then click on that um bell icon when it pops up now that bell icon when you click on that it it um allows um, you to be notified every time a video is uploaded right now almost 600 videos um, on YouTube uh, on this channel so lots of information beyond the morning market prep lots of free training lots of information and thank you to everyone um, uh, you guys are just awesome I I'm humbled every day when I look over there and see those subscriber numbers continuing to grow. Uh, the the wonderful kind comments that you guys leave, um, thank you so much. Um, means the world to me. You guys are the best. Um, so do me a favor as, as well. Continue to click those thumbs up buttons and leave those comments. Thank you for doing that. And um, also, please feel free to share this video with any friends, family, um, on your Facebook or Twitter feeds, whatever uh, you use for your social media outlets. So with that, everyone, let's take a look at a few stocks, a few stocks that, you know, are, are showing some good signs and uh, things that we might want to be watching for for potential trades. As you guys know, I've mentioned uh, Disney several times. I've really been watching this Disney. Now, this whole thing started for me because of this giant wedge pattern formed here on the chart. And those tend to once we get a multi-year breakout like this they tend to produce really really good moves now unfortunately what happened here is disney um, announced their streaming service and everybody got real excited even though the streaming service isn't set to begin until um November everyone got really excited about that streaming service well I've been keeping an eye here on Disney and Disney breaking um, breaking this um, area of support in here rallying breaking it again um, so I wasn't interested in entering that trade just yet but now we've recovered this little area of support and pulling back to hold it right now is a good sign for the chart so if we bounce around in here if we had just a few days of rest right in here a little consolidation I think I'd be pretty interested in maybe um, um, staying really really focused here um, on a potential entry in Disney now I am thinking about Disney for a longer term hold not long term not a buy and hold more of a position trade um, in the in this chart um, to really take advantage of this uh, potential of a big move so watch this closely up here this is the Disney weekly watch this up here see if we can start getting a lift on on this chart and moving this higher Disney to me seems to have some potential and one I want to pay attention to I also want to mention Roku I mentioned it yesterday Roku did get that buy signal produced yesterday looks like it's gonna follow through this morning so there's that pattern that I talk about all the time where a stock will move up and then consolidates itself over toward the trend we wait for those buyers to come in and push that uh, stock right up and that's really what's going on here on Roku looking nice here at the moment 
Roku looking higher. Uh, take a look at that HIIQ. Now HIIQ, more of a challenging trade and maybe not your kind of trade. Notice that HIIQ has this longer term downtrend in the chart, but we've we've popped up here and we're moving in a in a nice little uptrend, respecting price support and resistance in the chart, and broke through this level of resistance right here. So as this consolidates and bounces around in here, if we can find buyers in this area to start pushing this back up, there should be an, an enough open window in here to make some pretty good money if we just come back up to this resistance area. So watch that. It's it, it, like I said, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenging trade uh, may not be your cup of tea, but um, something to keep an eye on. Take a look at charts like Coca-Cola yesterday. Coca-Cola trying to make that pop yesterday, getting a little pullback. We'll have to watch this pattern in here. I still think Coke has that potential after this big move up to move back down toward this level of support in here and then actually finish out its trend so just consolidating or pulling back to test um, support and finding that new opportunity into that trade but coke could still be setting up and if we take a look at pepsico pepsico is right in that same arena looking actually stronger than coke right now beautiful trend in this chart and right now we're just showing that nice little consolidation again over toward the trend and we want to watch in here for that next potential leg higher on pepsico hey um you might want to take a look at monster beverages too um Take a look at Monster. Monster popping up through a resistance level in the chart and now getting this nice little pullback to test the, to the uptrend. Watch this in here uh, for a possible lift. Um, in this area, if we can hold this price support, catch that lift up in there, there may be an opportunity in that chart. Take a look at Starbucks. Starbucks just racing higher, moving up great, getting a little bit of a rest. We're now showing the possibility of that little bit of pullback or a little bit consolidation. I think if this continues to hold in here and obviously hold above this level of support, but if this continues to consolidate over here or a modest pullback, we want to watch that closely for the resumption of this trend in Starbucks. Keep an eye on that guy looking pretty decent here um, overall. So there's a few charts for you to look at. I hope you have a great day. Once again, I want to let everyone know that I will not be here tomorrow. I'm traveling for a wedding. I apologize about that, but I will be right back on Monday morning. So everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome uh, day and an awesome Friday and weekend. Since I won't be here, we'll talk to you all bright and early on Monday morning. Take care of yourselves. I wish you great success in your trading. We'll talk to you all very soon. Take care now.